I built an AI newsletter system that researches topics, writes content with citations, checks itself for bias and quality issues, and sends polished newsletters automatically. And I'm using NA10's new quality guardrails feature to do it, something that just became available. But instead of explaining how it works first, let me just show you. I've got a Google Sheet here with topics I want newsletters about. Let's say I want to know about the latest developments in AI agents. This workflow runs once a day, but for this demo, I'm going to trigger it manually. Watch what happens. The workflow kicks off. You can see multiple AI agents activating, the research leader, project planner, and these research assistants all working together like a finely orchestrated team. Everything merges, goes through an editor, passes through quality guardrails, and done. Let's check the inbox. And there it is, a professional newsletter about AI agents complete with citations, properly formatted sources, and it's actually well written because it went through multiple agents and multiple quality checks. Before I show you how this works, real quick on why this guardrails feature is a big deal. In this workflow, I'll be using it to check for incomplete content, bias, and toxicity. But you can use guardrails for all kinds of content validation, from jailbreak attempts, stopping users from manipulating your AI agents, NSFW, not suitable for work content, PII detection for personal data, secret keys, malicious URLs. Basically, any content validation rule you need, you can build with guardrails. It's like having a security checkpoint for AI output. Before we do a node-by-node -node walkthrough, let me show you the infrastructure set up with Hostinger, who I'm proud to be partnering with. I chose them because their platform is specifically suited for AI automation projects like this. Let me show you their KVM2 plan. This is exactly what I'm using. For the price, you get dedicated resources and full root access. But the real game changer, by self-hosting, you can run unlimited AI agents and unlimited executions. No monthly limits, no usage caps. What I love about this setup is the one-click NA10 installation with Q mode enabled. Plus, you get free weekly backups automatically. Setting this up is super straightforward. I'll just add the KVM2 plan into the cart. And here's the best part. I've got an exclusive discount for you. Just use Derek and the coupon code and get additional 10% savings on yearly plans. Here's how easy it is to access NADN after purchase. We'll select the free malware scanner, create a root password, continue, finish setup. After a few moments, it's building your N10 machine. Now your N10 machine is ready. We're going to manage the VPS, go to the dashboard, and then select Manage App. And there you go, your N10 instance is ready. All right, let's do a node by node walkthrough. So we're going to start from left to right. The first one is a schedule trigger. So the schedule trigger triggers at 7 a.m. It's going to call this Google Sheets, which has news that I want to monitor. In this case, I have specified in here the latest developments in AI agents, but you can have multiple topics. Now we're going to iterate through and loop through each of the items in here. And for each of the items, I'm going to start with the research leader. So this is a AI agent node. So this AI agent node has a system message that uses the perplexity tool to structure a table of contents for that particular topic. Now I'm going to use this perplexity tool to do the research here. And I'm going to set this to sonar reasoning model. So this has uh, different kinds of models that you can have, but sonar reasoning is a, a, a good one. And then we're going to pass the table of contents into a project planner. So this project planner will have uh, the ability to break down the table of contents into prompts. So if we look at the structure output here, it's going to output uh, the subtitle, the introduction, conclusions, image prompt, and a set of chapters for each of the chapters will have a title and a prompt. So uh, this will allow uh, the research assistants uh, to work on each of these prompts for a specific part of this, uh, this research. So now we go into the split node. So the split node will take a look at all the chapters that the project planner has 
uh, found out and uh, broken down into. And for each of the chapters, it's going to take a and initiate a research assistant. So if there's five chapters, we're going to have five research assistants. So each of these research assistants will work through each of the uh, prompts provided by the project planner and use the perplexity tool to do additional research and format it in HTML with citations. So there's a detailed citation guidelines here, as well as how to uh, format it. So each of the research assistants uh, also uh, then does this research and we merge and wait for all the research to be done before proceeding. So if there's five research assistants, there's gonna be uh, five research results that are merged and waited for in this merge node. In this merge node, we're just gonna combine and merge by position and get all the data uh, into this one node. Now we're going to then go into the uh, final article text. So the information that's passed through all the uh, research assistants, we, we're gonna put them together in this code node. So this code node uh, will add in the introduction and we'll uh, put together all the uh, research, research assistant outputs into one, as well as combining that into a conclusion and returning that in a article. So in this article JSON object, we're going to this editor AI agent node. So in this editor AI agent node, we're going to uh, have a persona of an expert uh, editor specializing in refining and polishing the content. So we're gonna take the content from this uh, final article text and we're gonna process it using content re uh, instructions. So re reviewing it, making sure there's uh, proper grammar, spelling, punctuation, preserving the tone and voice, and then preserving uh, the uh, citations. So it's the citations, we're gonna combine that and then have at the end also a uh, list of citations. So this does a lot of heavy lifting here. Now, after we do the uh, editor node, this is the uh, uh, new guardrail node. So if we go into here, you'll see a guardrail. So this is a new node that NADN has added. So if you select guardrail and then you uh, select check for violations, you're gonna get this node here. So this check for violations, you pass into it the text to check. So in here, we're gonna say, the output of the editor is the text we want to check. And we can have a lot of different kinds of guardrails, right? As I mentioned in the intro, there's a uh, jailbreak, there's um, not suitable for work and, and the like here. So I've selected uh, three kinds of checks I want to do for this uh, article. I want to do a keywords check. So this is if, I, if the AI has generated accidentally, uh, placeholder, to do, fix me, TBD, this kind of thing, if it detects any of that in this text, it's going to uh, raise an alarm saying that this is inappropriate and it'll fail. Now, I'm also checking for bias detection. So you can have into here a detailed uh, prompt that says you are a content analyst system designed to detect bias in text. All right, so here are the things that you can check for political bias, cultural bias, gender bias, racial bias, and, and the like here, right? So it's a, uh, and at the end, it gives you a confidence level of uh, whether or not uh, it has any of these biases. So we've uh, put the threshold of 0.6, but it can be higher or lower depending on uh, how you value the, the bias detection. So then we also put in a toxic, toxicity uh, detection. So in this, we do it similarly. We say you're a content moderating system designed to detect toxic content in text. And we put here additional checks for whether or not the text has insults of personal text, threats, intimidation, hate speech, and discriminatory language, and the like here. And then we also provide a rating. So this rating also uh, is uh, zero to one of the confidence level. Right, so if it's confident that it does not have, uh, or 60% confident that it does not have any of these uh, toxicity uh, detectors or signals, we're going to pass that, 
right? So this uh, will combine, gives us three criterias to check, but this can be even more powerful, right? So you can check uh, if there's, uh, you know, like personal uh, data, PII information, or if there's uh, secret keys or uh, malicious URL. So there's quite a lot of things you can check, but you can also check for uh, custom, custom patterns, right? So this is very, very powerful in terms of what you can do with this node. So this node here actually brings a good workflow into a great workflow because now you're confident that it passes the security checks. So after this uh, guardrail node is complete, it either passes or fails. So for fail, you can hook this up to a Slack channel to notify you or uh, another notification uh, mechanism to pass. We're gonna go to this next node here. If it passes all the security checks, it's going to get the title. So uh, we're just gonna take the editor output and ask it to suggest an appropriate title for the email that we can then uh, paste into our newsletter system. And then from there, we just output uh, to a Gmail node, the subject, as well as the editor uh, message. That's the complete system. Multi-agent research, content generation, quality guardrails, and automated delivery. If you found this useful, subscribe for more AI automation tutorials. All right, that's it. See you in the next one.